Did you notice how these guys have been getting pretty active in my hands? That's probably because my hands are really warm. And there is something about reptiles and amphibians that's much different from us. Does anybody know what it's called when they're dependent on the outside temperature? They're cold-blooded. That's right, they're cold-blooded. Both reptiles and amphibians are cold-blooded or ectothermic, meaning their bodies don't generate a lot of heat, so they must move between sun and shade to regulate their body temperature. Mammals and birds are warm-blooded or endothermic, meaning their bodies generate heat and maintain a constant body temperature. Since reptiles and amphibians are dependent upon the external environment to regulate their temperature, they become inactive when outside temperatures fall. Warm late winter days will increase the activity levels of both reptiles and amphibians. This is why we hear spring peepers in February and may even see a snake on a warm winter day. January cottonmouth. Amphibians are unique because their bodies undergo metamorphosis, a Greek word meaning to change in form. The change begins when the eggs hatch into tadpoles with gills, a tail for swimming, and a small mouth designed to feed on algae and plants. This tadpole stage underwater could last just a few weeks or up to two years, depending on the species. As the tadpole grows, its body undergoes major changes. Hind legs appear, then front legs. The mouth widens, the lungs develop, and the tail is absorbed as the tadpole becomes a frog or a toad. Reptiles differ from amphibians in that they don't go through a metamorphosis phase as the amphibians do. Scales, claws, and shells are what give reptiles their unique look and make them noticeably different than amphibians. This is a broadhead skink, a female broadhead skink. Broadhead and five-lined skinks are commonly seen in wooded areas and even in the backyard. They like to feed on insects and spiders. This is a wood turtle. Wood turtles, another rare one in the state. This is a state-threatened species found mostly in northern and northwestern Virginia. They are kind of neat in that they spend most of the winter and some of the fall and spring in the, in the streams and they tend to come out more on land in the summer, spring and summer. The Department of Game and Inland Fisheries has several studies underway to learn more about the home range and life history of turtles. The one on my, my right is a wood turtle and the one on my left is a box turtle. And both of these turtles can be found up on land and sometimes even uh, along the, the margins of the water and in, and in the water sometimes. The two big differences between these turtles is that the box turtle has a, uh, a highly domed shell. Uh, you'll find it varying in color from black with uh, yellow to orange modeling. It also has a bottom shell or a, or a a plastron that is hinged and this is a uh, unique there's only a, a few species that have this hinged plastron and I'm pointing to it right now and this enables that turtle to completely enclose itself uh, within a shell and uh, this is a very good uh, way to keep from predators from getting in there and, and trying to make a meal of you. The other species the wood turtle is brown with uh, yellow flecks and yellow modeling, uh, also orange. It has uh, bright orange feet and, and skin. And the difference is that it, it's somewhat flattened, although it, it does have these sculptured pyramid-like uh, scutes. And this turtle cannot close its, its bottom shell to, uh, to keep away from predators. What it does is uses its, its large front feet which are heavily scaled and it pushes those inside the shell and protects its head from uh, uh, being in contact with a, a raccoon or a possum or a skunk that would try to make a meal of it. Box turtles are becoming less common in Virginia due to loss of habitat. Many become casualties on our roadways as they travel to find mates and to lay eggs. Many people like to give turtles a helping hand by moving them across the road. If you do move one, always move it in the direction it was heading. Moving it back where it came from will only endanger it again as it continues to try to cross. 
We're on our last group of reptiles. Does everybody know what that is? Snakes! Is anybody, anybody afraid of snakes? <laughs> Just a couple people in the back. Um, well, I promise I don't have anything dangerous. Um, and I would like to assure everybody that all snakes in the wild, um, especially in Virginia, um, are, are nothing to fear. Even the venomous snakes, a uh, bite is a very, very, very last resort. Snakes are perhaps the most misunderstood animals in Virginia. While many people fear them, the truth is snakes are beneficial creatures as they feed on rodents like rats and mice that can harbor disease and destroy property. This one is called an eastern king snake. Does anybody know why they might call it a king snake? Because it's big. It's a big one. They do get pretty big. That's, there's a different reason they, they call it a king snake. There's something they like to eat that makes them the king. Other snakes? Yeah, all other snakes, basically. They eat all other snakes. They'll even eat a venomous snake. Um, they'll eat copperheads and rattlesnakes and cottonmouths. Um, they somehow are immune to the venom, so if they are um, bitten, they're okay. But uh, they, like uh, black rat snakes, they actually will coil around their prey and, and squeeze until it can't breathe and, um, so they can handle it and swallow it whole. So if we could open our mouths as big as they could with that type of um, stretching and tendons and everything, we could open our mouths as big as our hips and down to our bellies <laughs> and be, be able to maybe swallow something like a watermelon whole. <laughs> so that's how they're able to swallow things whole. They also have um, the non-venomous snakes, and even the venomous snakes have these teeth as well, a little row of teeth on the bottom and the top, and the teeth are curved back like thorns. So that helps when they catch something and, and trying to swallow it down, that helps push it back into their throat and down, t down the rest of their system. <laughs> and this is all a big bluff. <laughs>